First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Matil. This is a picture of me. I work at Sibley Primary School and I also work for the Jurassic Maths Hub. We are in Devon and here on the map you can see whereabouts in the country I'm saying hello to you from. In your last lesson, you were asked to look at these questions. Let's go through these together. First of all, the whole is three, and one of the parts is three, so the missing part should be zero. When we add zero to a number, the number remains unchanged. This time we have five and zero as parts, so the whole will be five. And finally, we have six as a part and as a whole, so we would need to add zero to the six so that the number remained unchanged. Let's see what you got for your answers for the second part. Zero plus nine is nine. Zero plus two is two. Zero plus zero, this might have made you think a bit more. There are zero children on the bus. Zero more children got on the bus. So in total, there are zero children on the bus. Well done, everybody. We will recap our understanding a little bit to help us to access our new learning today. I've got six eggs in my basket. I go to the supermarket, but there are no more eggs to add to my basket. So I still have six. Let's look at what that looks like on a number line. First, I had six, then I add zero. So now, wonder if you can say it with me, I still have six. As a number sentence, six eggs plus zero eggs equals six eggs. When we add zero to a number, the number remains unchanged. In this example, I've got six eggs in my basket. I decide I'm going to share some out with my friends. But none of my friends need any eggs, so I end up giving zero away. That means that I still have six eggs in my basket. In this story, I started with six eggs. What happened next? That's right, I subtracted zero eggs from the basket. That means that I still have six eggs in the basket. Six subtract zero equals six. When we subtract zero from a number, the number remains unchanged. In this story, I have six eggs in my basket again. But, oh no, I have a fit of an accident and I drop all of the eggs. Six eggs are broken. How many eggs will be left in my basket? Very clever. There are now zero eggs in the basket because all of them were broken. Let's have a look at this story. I started with six eggs in my basket. What happened next? Six eggs were broken. They're no longer in the basket and I'm left with zero eggs. Can you have a go at saying that number sentence? Six subtract six equals zero. What does the zero represent? The zero represents that there's no eggs left in my basket. What does the first six represent? The first six represent the eggs that I had to start with. 
what does the second sixth represent? The second sixth represent all of the eggs that were broken. Do you notice anything about these numbers? Fortunately, a friend was able to lend me a few more eggs. I've got three eggs in my basket. But oh my goodness me, I am so clumsy, I've dropped all of them. There's no eggs in my basket. Why aren't there any eggs in my basket now? Oh, because I dropped them all. Let's have a look at this story. I had three. What does a three represent? Three eggs to start with. Three eggs were then broken. So now I have zero eggs in my basket. Three, subtract three equals zero. Let's look at the number sentences that we've explored so far. First of all, I had six eggs. I dropped six eggs and I ended up with zero eggs. In the second example, I had three eggs. I dropped three eggs and I was left with zero eggs. Is there a pattern in these numbers? There's a generalisation that we can use here. When we subtract a number from itself, we always have a difference of zero. Let's see how that pattern continues. If I have 10 eggs and I drop 10 eggs, I will be left with zero eggs. If I have nine eggs and I drop nine eggs, I will be left with zero eggs. If I have eight of anything and eight of that same thing has gone for whatever reason, what am I going to be left with? Very good, zero. When we subtract a number from itself, we have a difference of Zero. You have a go at saying that. I'd like you to have a go at the rest of the questions on this page independently. You can pause the video and then we'll go through them together. OK, we'll go through the answers now. You might have noticed something about your answers. All of them gave you an answer of zero. Why is that? Why have I always got an answer of zero? Oh, well, it's because in all of these questions, the amount that I've started with is the same amount that I'm subtracting. So I will always get a difference of zero. Are you ready for a bit of a challenge now? I'm going to show you some much bigger numbers. 53, subtract 53. What would that be? Well done, zero, because I'm subtracting the same amount from what I had to start with. Here's a really large amount, 99, subtract 99. That will equal zero getting very good at noticing the patterns now. When we subtract a number from itself, we have a difference of zero. I'm going to tell you a new story now. I've got nine books on my bookshelf. And I lend these books out to some other children. 
they take all of the book. I'm then left with no books on my bookshelf. What would the numbers be in this number sentence? I had nine to start with. Pause the video and see if you can write the number sentence. I had nine books to start with. I subtracted nine books because they were all borrowed. I was left with zero books. So my number sentence is nine subtract nine equals zero. I wonder if you could think of any more stories linked to these kind of problems. Perhaps after your learning today, you'd like to see if you could come up with some yourself. Because today is the last lesson on this learning, I'd like you to have a go at the practice activity and then we will go through the answers together. Pause the video and see if you can complete these questions. There are some missing number problems. There is a part whole model. And there is a number line. And finally, there is a challenge. Pause the video now. And when you come back, we'll be ready to go through the answers together. Let's go through the answers. 4 subtract 4 equals 0. What would the missing number be if I subtract 1 and end up with 0? The missing number will be 1. What will the missing number be if I subtract 9 and have a difference of 0? The missing number will be 9. What will the missing number be if I have 5 and I subtract something to have a difference of 0? The missing number will be 5. In my part whole model, I have 3 as the whole. Part is zero, so the other part must be three. In the number line, I have two, I've subtracted two, so I will have zero. Well done, everybody. Let's have a look at the challenge. What numbers did you put here? You could have chosen any numbers, so long as they were both the same. It could have been 8 subtract 8 equals 0. It could have been 1 subtract 1 equals 0. It could have been 25 subtract 25 equals 0. There are many possibilities. I wonder how many you found. You've done a really super job of your learning over the past few lessons. You've been learning so much about number facts to 10. Just look at all of the rules that you've been learning. You've learnt how to add a number onto zero. You know all of the answers to these questions now. You know what happens to a number when we add zero to it. You also know how to find one more in both ways. You're also really good at your doubles and because you know your doubles you're able to do the ones that are near double. If we know that 3 and 3 is 6 we know that 3 add 4 will just be one more and 3 add 2 will just be one less. We've also looked at how to add 2 in both ways. And we've looked at those slightly trickier ones when we're adding three. Finally, we've got really good at our number bonds and all of the ways that we can make 10. And because you know all of these this way round, 
you also know all of these. They're just the number sentence the other way round. Haven't you learnt a lot? You might like to make a chart like this at home. Perhaps you could play a game where you cover some of them up and then calculate the answers. Keep practising these. It's really good to have these number facts to hand. Another thing to notice is not only do you know the addition, but you also know the subtraction facts. If you have the fact in your head that 4 add 6 equals 10, you also have the fact that 10 subtract 6 equals 4, and 10 subtract 4 equals 6. You really have learnt a lot. Well done everybody. Super work. <laughs>